Hello everybody! Welcome back to G-Bear's Off-Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. And yeah, I'm out here getting ready to repair some wiring. And uh, because I had a, a question and comment about soldering, I figured, well, why not do this on tape so that I can help somebody out. So I got my um, phone set up in the uh, tripod. Excuse me, I was tightening some things so it wouldn't swivel on me. And anyway, I'm going to be taking this one off first, and then I'm going to do this one, and then this one. This is the worst one. And uh, if you can see it, let's see if I can get up there. Okay, look at this. That is really loose in that um, lug, and so is this one. Let me see if I can get down to where I'm at here. Okay, there we go. And that one's loose. This one's loose. And this one's loose. Now, I already cut back the shrink tube right there so that it's, uh, it's ready to go. But I'm going to get to this right now, and I'll show you a couple of little tricks that I came up with for doing stuff like this. So let me set the camera back down here. Come on, please let me set it down. All right, let's make sure I'm in zoom here. Okay, so we're going to be working right about here. Now this item that I made is a three-quarter inch pipe or nipple uh, by 12 inches long. And it's got a base flange on it down here. Uh, let's see if I can get to that. Right here, it's got a base flange on a piece of wood. And then it's got the um, uh, bar clamp type fittings on here. And what's that for? Well, that's going to hold my wire in place while I'm doing my soldering. So. The wire will actually hang over the board, so if there's a drip of solder, it'll hit on the board, not on my inverter. Now, normally I would put a rag on there with a little bit of water on the rag, and as the um, stuff dripped down, it would solidify right away. But let me get this first wire off here and pull these caps, and we'll get to the first one so I can show you how that's done. Uh, come on, caps, get off of there. All right, so first we're going to take off this one. And then we'll take off this one. I already shut down the inverter so that it wouldn't uh, be a shock to all of my equipment that's running. All right, so I got that that one loose and that one loose. So here, here we go. So I'm going to get my little pocket knife out here, and I'm going to cut this back, and then cut it off about right at the insulation. So I can peel that off of there. Come on. Well, this thing got so hot that the uh, the shrink tube is almost welded to the uh, to the copper lug. Oh my God. Bear with me, people. I'm trying to get it off of there. Yeah, it got, it got so hot from a loose connection that the, uh, the insulator uh, shrink tube melted onto the uh, unit. 
And look at that, I can almost pull the wire. I can almost pull that wire right out of there. Okay, so I got that one done. Let me see if I can get this one off because I can see this one's really loose. Yeah, look at this. It wants to pull right out of there. Uh, that's the problem right there. That's uh, that's what's been setting up high resistance and lowering my um, battery voltages. And no, I didn't buy these cables like this. They were given to me, and when I was doing some work, I noticed that they seemed to wiggle a little bit. So I asked the person that gave them to me, did you buy these things pre-made, or did you make them up yourself? And when they told me that they made them up themselves, oh, the, head, the lug just fell right off of there while I was pulling this so yeah that's definitely a problem there all right so I'm going to get this one done and show you how easy it is and uh, he thought it was because he didn't cut enough insulation back but that's not bad right there okay so what you want to do is try to get it in without any wires sticking outward like that and then I'm going to set it up in here where it'll be held and I can clamp it kind of like Jed clamp it or Ellie Mae alright so the spray bottle of water here is to give it a quick cooling but I don't use a lot of water um, when I solder this I just going to do it fast to get this thing soldered and I'm going to show you how easy this is now, what you're going to need is one of these little torches okay and you can buy these at about any hardware store and you know the little propane bottles you can get the uh, chubby ones like this or the elongated ones it doesn't matter as long as it's propane and then uh, Always unscrew these when you're done using them, otherwise they'll leak gas and you'll have to come back to an empty tank. Alright, so now I'm going to crank this on. And we don't need a really super hot flame, so I'm going to turn it down a ways. Alright. Now, what I'm, all i got to do is take my solder and I extend about a 6 inch length off of it. And I'm just going to start heating up this um, lug at the end. Okay, and always start heating from the bottom because, as we know in thermodynamics, heat rises. So if you're going down from the top, you're defeating your purpose. So if we heat from the bottom, it'll go up automatically. Then you take your wire and you, or your solder and you just put it right in here. And you can see it's melting right in. It's getting shorter. And it'll just keep on going in until it's got enough in there to solder it. And that's it. Now, I'm going to shut this off for right now so I don't burn extra fuel. I'm going to drag out my next 6 inch length of solder and have it ready for the next one. In the meantime, I'm going to give this a little spritz. That's all it takes. So now it won't fall off when I jiggle the wire. But I'm not going to touch that because it's just too hot. So I'm going to late take this outside and finish cooling it so that I don't uh, burn my fingers when I touch it. All right. 
Okay, it's just warm right now. But as you can see, that is on there for good. That's not coming off. Much better than any crimp. Now the other thing I noticed you did wrong um, to the individual that did these is the location of your crimp. You crimped them too close to the eyelet. You need to clip, crimp them back closer to the flare if you're going to use a crimp. All right. Uh, I've never liked crimps. I've even got a hydraulic crimper for doing that. But uh, crimps, just to me, all it does is squeeze two pieces together. It really doesn't give you a super great contact. There's nothing like a good solder. Now this one is not really too bad, but I'm going to do it anyway. So it's going back in the, uh, the clamp up here. Move my water away. Fire up the torch again. Got my solder ready. I'm going to heat this one up. You can always tell when it's ready because the color changes on the copper. It kind of turns to a rainbow color. All right. So that's the second one done. We're going to give that a little spritz to cool it off. Just enough to cool it so it's solid. Now I'll take it off. Take it outside here and give it a good cool down. And that one is done. That is a solid connection. So now I can move on to the next one. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to put this one back in place. So that's about it, everybody. That's how you solder the end lugs onto the copper wire. And this is one knot wire. That's one, one diagonal slash zero. And uh, it's usually you use welding cable, which is a fine... Um, fine copper mesh inside of the wire. You don't want coarse wire on this. You want it soft and flexible like this so it moves. All right. Thank you for joining me, everybody. This is G-Bear signing off.